President Governor Paul Richard LePage. I would like to talk to you about your comments about my being a racist you cocksucker. And you, I want to talk to you. You want, I want you to prove that I'm a racist. I've spent my life helping black people and you little son of a bitch, socialist cocksucker, you, I need you to, this freaking, I want you to record this and make it public because I am after you. Thank you. I was really glad that I wasn't in the room with him when he left it, because he really sounded like somebody who, you know, was, was about to commit physical violence, and, and it was really a, a stunning message. This afternoon, LePage apologized for the people of Maine having to hear the voicemail, but not for the voicemail itself. Everything I said to him is less insulting to me than being called a racist. After leaving the voicemail, LePage then said he wanted to challenge Katine to a duel and point his gun, quote, right between his eyes. The governor later challenges Katine to a duel. That's how angry I am. And I bet, and I wouldn't put my gun in the air, guarantee you. I would not be Al uh, Hamilton. I'd point it right, right between his eyes. LePage is no stranger to controversy. I was Donald Trump before Donald Trump became, uh, became my popular. Something he himself acknowledged in his endorsement of Donald Trump earlier this year. But the parallels go further. An outsider riling up the establishment, a fighter willing to go to the mat with political foes. LePage's daughter even works for Trump's campaign. And yes, he's a politician with a history of not so politically correct comments. From strong words to President Obama, and as your governor, you're going to be seeing a lot of me on the front page saying, Governor LePage tells Obama to go to hell. To punctuating a dispute with the NAACP like this. I'm going to kiss my butt. And recently, on the father of a Muslim American soldier killed in action in Iraq. Then there's the mighty powerful one, like Mr. Khan, which is a Khan artist himself. And he uses the death of his son, who's an American soldier, which we respect and honor. And he uses that to go after Trump, which I found very distasteful. But it's comments related to the state's heroin crisis that have followed LePage for months. These are guys that are named D-Money, Smoothie, Shifty. Uh, these type of guys, they come from Connecticut, New York. They come up here, they sell their heroin, then they go back home. Incidentally, half the time they impregnate a young white girl before they leave, which is a real sad thing because then we have another issue that we've got to deal with down the road. The governor of your state called you a lot of things I cannot repeat on the air multiple times. What's your response? Well, it was pretty shocking to get that voicemail yesterday. Uh, I've never received a voicemail like that before. and. Uh, um, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, this is a governor, as you pointed out, who continues to cross the line. And every time you think he's crossed a line, you think he can't go any further. Uh, but then he draws a different line and he crosses it. And, and this is a pattern of behavior by this governor. And it's, it's really unfortunate because I think Maine people really deserve a lot better uh, from their governor and uh, uh, from the leader of our state. Has he spoken to you since then? Has he pulled any of this back, he at least apologized for some of the vitriol in that call? No, he hasn't pulled anything back, uh, you know, in any comments that he has made to me. That's not his style. This is a governor that um, likes to double down. And, and uh, it doesn't surprise me that, that uh, you know, he hasn't pulled back the statements. And um, I, don't, I don't really expect him to. Now, now, he says he made the call because uh, uh, he says that you called him a racist or a reporter told him that you called him a racist. Did, did you accuse him of being a racist? No. I, I, you know, I'm not a name caller. Uh, I'm not going to play that game with the governor. Um, I was asked to, to respond to the comments he made about our drug crisis, and I said that racially charged comments are not going to help us solve this extremely serious problem that we have up here in Maine. You little son of a bitch, socialist cocksucker, I want you to prove that I'm a racist. This freaking... Give it to the people without providing Vaseline. This freaking... I need a young white girl. I want to talk to you, cocksucker. 
this freaking you little son of a bitch socialist cocksucker prove that I'm a racist. Now the traffickers, these are people that take drugs. These are guys that are named D-Money, Smoothie, Shifty, uh, these type of guys that come from Connecticut, New York. They come up here, they sell their heroin, then they go back home. Incidentally, half the time they impregnate a young white girl before they leave. I want you to prove that I'm a racist. Why am I going to go up and face people and talk to them in an audience that just the day, you know, a week or two before they're trying to impeach me? That's just silliness. So why don't we just, I'll go to work, keep working, I'll send them a letter, and we'll be call it, a, call it a day. Governor Paula Page doesn't want to give the state of the state this year, not if it means talking in person to the legislature that just debated impeaching him. Uh, he raised the prospect that he might skip the whole speech this year, submit it in writing instead. But then the impeachment thing fell apart, and now we're left with this interesting open question. Since it turns out you're not being impeached, Governor, is the speech back on? Or are you still literally going to mail it in for Maine's state of the state this year? Simple question. We reached out to the governor's office to ask, and I got to tell you, we do this kind of thing all day long, getting basic information from all different kinds of public officials. This is what we do. Uh, this is a normal thing. This is what we sent. Hi. Hi. Wanted to see if the governor's made a decision about whether or not he'll give the state of the state address in person to lawmakers or if he still plans to send a letter. Do you have any information on that decision yet? Thanks. Simple question to the governor's office, right? This was the response we got from Paul LePage's office. Look at this. This is the whole thing. Quote. Why does Rachel Maddow have such an unnatural obsession with Governor LePage? Her neurotic fixation on him is kind of bizarre. <laughs> that was the response from the governor's office. That was the whole thing. It's very strange. So we tried again. <laughs> is this seriously your response? Should we take this to mean that the governor has not yet made up his mind? Response from Paula Page's office, quote, it's a serious question. Does Rachel have ties to Maine? If not, what's her weird fascination with him? So that's a, that's a no? <laughs> we tried again. Hi, wanted to try one more time on our question about Governor LePage's state of the state this year. Has he made a decision about whether he will give the state of the state address in person or if he will just send a letter instead? We really are just looking for an answer to that question. If you can't answer it, is there someone else we could try to speak with? Thanks very much. Governor's response, quote, of course I can answer it, but you first. What's with Maddow's obsession with the governor? <laughs> Admit it. At this point, you'd start to be a little obsessed as well. So we went back once more to the governor's office. This is becoming a strange interaction. We are just trying to get some basic information about a statement the governor made. We are covering this like we would any other newsmaker or public official in the country. Our obsessiveness is only about the news. And Governor LePage is making it hard to get basic information about the governance of that state. And that is starting to feel newsworthy too. Response from the governor's office. <laughs> Bupkis, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so seriously, I cannot tell you whether or not Maine is getting a state of the state address this year because the governor apparently finds it very offensive that I would even want to know. So all I can tell you is that the state of the state address usually takes place by early February. But apparently you're a sicko if you want to know any more about it than that. So says the governor of that fine state. Just amazing. Give it to the people without providing Vaseline. Going impromptu in my brain didn't catch up to my mouth. The governor of Maine, Paul LePage, has now taken over the record of being the dumbest governor in America. And I say that because he went on a radio show to discuss the election and look at what he said about Donald Trump. Sometimes I wonder that our Constitution is not only broken, but it needs to... Uh, we need a Donald Trump to uh, show some, some uh, authoritarian power in our country and bring back the, uh, the, the, uh, the rule of law, because we've had eight years of a president that just is an autocrat. He just does it on his own. He ignores Congress, and we're slipping every single day. We're slipping into anarchy, and I, I just think that four more years of a similar mentality is going to destroy this, case, this nation. That is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. 